live on Musicians on the Record. I'm David Ward. I am so honored to have as my guest again live, Mr. Walfredo Reyes Jr. Wally, hi Wally. How you doing? Nice to see you again. Great to have you here. Backstage and on stage. Yeah, backstage and on stage. Yeah. He let me play on the drums, Ma, so that yeah. was very cool. So, <laughs> hey, we're at the Cross Insurance Arena in Portland, Maine. Chicago is about to rock our world. It's really fantastic. And, uh, Wally, how is the tour going so far? It's going great, especially after a lobster roll. I love Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine is great, and, and I would love to give you the key to the city. Unfortunately, they, they haven't given me that authority yet, but I'm working on it, okay? So uh, so you had a lobster roll. We had a lot of rain here, so we didn't get to, but, but you, okay. you got to walk today, right? Yeah, if you have rain, you have green plants, and flowers are happy, and you have a lot of water. Send some to the West Coast. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Well, we're psyched to have you here in Portland, Maine. Tell us about some of the highlights of the tour so far. Well, you know, Chicago, we usually take a break every like three to four weeks, and take like two weeks off and then go back at it again. So we got uh, this one on the East Coast and then we take a little break and then we start in Chateau Saint-Michel around July 18, something like that. And then we do the West Coast, Chateau Saint Michel, Portland, all the way down, LA, California, and Arizona. So, you know, we actually covered the whole United States pretty well. Fantastic, yeah. Tell me a little bit about traveling, being on tour. What are the most fun parts? What are the most challenging parts? Uh, well, you know, it's really all fun, really, because uh, these guys, and I'm very lucky and blessed and grateful. I mean, Chicago has it down. They haven't stopped in 50-something years. So they got it down to where they got three buses for the band, so you're not overcrowded. And, you know, you don't want to, like, kill each other at the end of a tour. You want to, like, miss each other. And musically, it's fantastic. That's, like, highlight to basically go into the zone for two hours. Not only we're living the soundtrack of our lives, but we're looking at individuals in the audience reliving, dancing, moving to the soundtracks of their lives also. So it's really uh, a high when you finish playing on stage. Then, you know, we get a, a bite to eat. Uh, we hop on the bus. We travel at night. We have sleepers in the bus just in case you want to stay up all night or go to bed, you know. And then we check into the next hotel and we have a, a day off or another show. And in the day off, you know, I try to keep creative and walk and fit and live a healthy life because I want to be doing this until I'm 100 and something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right. Yeah, just like your dad, right? Is, is your dad still playing? Yeah, he actually had his uh, 85th birthday, I mean 86th birthday recently, June 16, which was uh, Father's Day. Yes. Yeah. So his birthday is on Father's Day. Yeah, my dad's birthday is on Father's Day. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. fantastic. Yeah. You, you're bringing so much joy to people because you're, you're right. These Chicago songs, they're iconic songs of our youth. They're, they're associated with memories. Uh, what are some of your favorites to play? Oh, my God, I have so many favorites. Uh, some of the, oh, the band is coming in. The band's coming in. They can yeah. come into the interview, too, if they want. We're live on Facebook. Hi, come on in. On? We're on. We're live. This is live on Facebook, really? Yes. Wow, Howland. hi. Hi, Keith. hi, I'm Keith Howland of the Bad Chicago, and it's great to be here. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you see, these guys are like, we, we arrive early to do this little yeah. on stage interview, yeah. but when the band arrives, it's just like a party off stage, and then we go on stage, and the band sounds great. I mean, you know, you can actually hear on um, YouTube and all over the place, and we, we have fun every night. Yeah. Big party going on here. I got some Gatorade. Yes. Look out. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know. Um, and then there's Ray. There's Ray. Earlier. Ray, if you, you want to come in. Say hi again. Ray Islas, percussionist for Chicago. Yeah, Ray and I uh, share like this Emble case, and then we got some of the other guys spread all over the place because this is like a hockey arena, right? Yes. yes. So we have different dressing rooms and... And yeah, you know, we, we do this and communicate. It's a beautiful, 
time that we're living that we have Skype and live and we can communicate better with our families and our kids. Long time ago, there was not none of that. So, yeah. So, so tell us where you're watching from in the world. Say hello to Wally. It's Walfredo Reyes Jr. They're about to color our world uh, in Chicago, or Portland, Maine of Chicago. You were warming up here. You were doing some pretty incredible things. Uh, can you say a little bit about can you say a little bit about your warm-up routine? Um, I don't know if you can see it here. I'll, I'll fix the camera. Well, you know, I usually, main thing is just to warm up before the show so you don't sacrifice the first song by warming up. So uh, I try to be in my peak on the first song. And of course, you you will warm up as the show goes on, but I don't want to be like going like in the first song. Okay, I need to warm up more. You know, it's not fair to the song, which is introduction. So it's it's a challenging song. So you know, I just try to do like, hopefully, a lot of the drummers um, exercises. I mean, off the top of my head, I don't have a specific routine. Make sure I do rolls. I, I practice. You know, rebounds, accents, and then sometimes I, uh, guys. That's okay. It's okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll roll thing. with it. Yeah. So basically, I have this little app called the Percussion Tutor, and uh, it gives you a lot of different rhythms and um, uh, grooves. In, yeah, in a metronome. Instead of. Um, uh, yeah, they, they, I don't think they hear us doing an interview. So, uh, so like this right now, like I'm having right now, it's like a little timba percussion group. Beautiful. So I hear it. And then I can improvise. Yeah, so that's really great. I love it. I'm doing a little interview here. So we can. We've got Tony watching from Australia. These guys come in and they're like full of fire already. What did you do today? Hey, let me tell you what I did today. Hey, did you get? Did you see that bar? Did you see that restaurant? The lobster was fantastic. Yeah. This is a rock show, folks. This is the way we roll. So we'll just pretend we're at the NAM show when we got the noise in the back. Exactly, background. exactly. Yeah. Very cool. So, so you know, this little app uh, is called percussiontutor.com. It's fantastic because it gives you a lot of different rhythms from like Africa, Cuba, Brazil, and you can actually it's interactive. So, uh, so instead of just a metronome, I put the grooves and and then make it feel good and improvise through the groove. So uh, I warm up with that, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just go like. Just to feel my, my feet. Singles, you know, stick control, rudiments. And then sometimes I don't do none of the rudiments. I just get ideas. You know, I just do like something like whatever sounds good at the moment. Like... You know, and just drive this guy's crazy. <laughs> the rest of the band, right? Yeah. That's fantastic. And these are my my blue painted El Roquero Regal Tip sticks. Beautiful sticks. Like a, my drum set is kind of like sea and land, uh, blue and earth tone. So how 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 did that? How did you get inspired to do that? My girlfriend is a scuba diver. Ah, there you go. So we um, we and and I'm from Cuba. And lived in Puerto Rico, so I, I, I'm used to the those waters, you know, the beaches. So it's really beautiful. And since I cannot be neither in the Caribbean or with her all the time on the road, 
I got the drum set to remind me <laughs> of the beautiful uh, Bahama and uh, Puerto Rico, the Caribbean. Yeah, that's great inspiration when you're playing, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Tell me a little bit about, we talked out there about some of the tuning and the way that you play and project in a, in a big stadium like this. Um, how do you keep your, your volume and your intensity? Because mm -hmm. um, you can't play too loud, but you got to keep your intensity going. How do you work that? Yeah, well, the thing is that um, when, uh, when, when the situation, when you actually have a drum set that doesn't have any microphones, um, it, it, it's different than when you actually start putting the microphones. Like right now, for example, you can hear me s speak soft, but if I didn't have a microphone, I would have to speak louder. So... This, the same thing. These guys are getting louder and louder. It's a rock band. Yeah, it's a rock band. Um, so, you know, uh, you have to be aware of the room you're playing, the, the volume of your drums, and if you have microphones on each drum set, if you have two overheads and the drums are open, then, you know, the overheads are going to capture as you hear the drums from a distance. Yes, I got your cash on my side. Um, but, you know, when, when you have a... Um, a situation where the microphones, the, the, the sound man is amplifying your drum set, you really don't have to hit that hard and you'll be here in the, in the room. I, I've seen Jim Keltner and a lot of guys like Steve Gatt not over pound and choke the drums and still be heard all over the room. I've seen concerts, uh, Manu Cache with Peter Gabriel, even Vinnie Caliuto, uh, um, guys you know Jeff Percaro you know playing and I heard it all over the the, the room uh, so the more you pound the drums louder the less microphones there should be and and because the microphone is gonna be go like oh my god it's almost like me screaming at this microphone right here too much exactly so the same I follow almost the same thing as a vocalist uh, somebody told me man i had to turn Julio iglesias almost whispers and i have to turn the microphone really loud on Julio iglesias so but you heard it so that means that he was whispering so you have but if he would have been screaming the microphone situation has to change so a lot of times when i know that plexiglass when you have a, a strings and some leakage and all that but all my, the best, my favorite rock concerts of all time in 46 years I've been in the business, I just don't see um, all the classic drummers being put behind a plexiglass because, you know, if you have, when the microphones enter, you can actually tap this, and with a microphone, it can be heard all over the place. So why go, if you can just go with a live microphone, and one of the most important things as a drummer is to play relaxed, exactly. right? Yeah. So that's another good point. Uh, I remember David Garibaldi saying something one time in a clinic. I have a cap from relaxation to tension. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's almost like you hold a stick, but there's a point where you're either holding and tightening the stick or dropping the stick. So you got to figure out that point where you're and, and I'm not tense I mean the minute you start getting really tense uh, and hitting or over playing the drum you, you don't only choke the drum but then it's not it doesn't work great for you just like sports boxing Muhammad Ali I saw a special last night the guy was always loose and relaxed and punching and knocking out people. So you still have that snap on the drums that you can s snap and get the sound out of the drums without being like, Arr. you know what so I'm saying? Important. And that takes practice. I mean, you've been doing this for years with incredible acts, Chicago, Santana, you know, who else uh, uh, in your discography catalog? <laughs> well, you can go to WalfredoReyesJr.com. And uh, I, I've been very lucky. I started really early in my life when I was in high school in Las Vegas. 
playing for Las Vegas Performers. And then um, I moved to LA in 1980 and just work in the studios and getting gigs here and there from the jazz field, the Latin, percussion, and being, being versatile. If it paid money, I played it. And that, that means that I'm talking about Persian gigs, weddings, jazz gigs, club gigs, symphonic gigs, top 40 pop rock gigs. So when the time comes, you know, you bring this, all this vocabulary to your band or your artist that you're working. So when I started with Santana, for example, with Santana, you had to play blues, rock, Latin. You know how to, you have to know how to play with the percussionist next to you. Then Steve Winwood, the same situation. It was a variety of things. And I'm, I'm a buff anyways on history. I love like to find, you know, like the story of stacks, Muscle Shoals rhythm section, the Motown rhythm section, King Records in Cincinnati. You know, this is my business. I love the history of my business, which is the drumming business and the music business. So the more you learn about your, the past uh, drummers, the more you bring all this information to your vocabulary. Yeah, no doubt. And coming from a musical family, you knew early on, and I want to keep track of our time because I know he's got a gig in a few minutes, folks. <laughs> so uh, you knew early on the dream was to be a drummer, right? I started playing, well, I wanted to be a veterinarian, but then I actually started playing when I was 12, um, the drum set. I saw this band and the band was like really popular in, in school. I was in the eighth grade. I took a girl on a date and the older girls were going, oh my God, they're so cute. Oh my God, they're, and I'm going, wait a minute. We're giving them our money. They're taking our girls and then they're having fun. And I went, dad, I, I think I want to play drums and play the rock music. And my dad said, oh yeah, it's not going to happen just like that. There's the metronome. There's the Rudiman book. There's a chair and a mirror, mm. so you practice your posture, rudiments, and a pad. Yeah. And I thought I was an abused child. I said, like, how long do I have to, how long are you going to punish me to get to the drum set? And he goes, well, let's see how you're doing in three months. I go, three months? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, at that time, we moved to Las Vegas, and then he put me with a teacher, Mr. Leo Camera, that was the house percussionist at the Hilton. Wow. And he goes, come on, give the kid a break. He can do that, but the other half of the lesson, put him on the drum set, start doing some rock beats, you know, some fills, and that's when I started playing drums while I was also playing percussion, and I've never done anything else. I uh, just basically just... And, and even though the world lost probably a good veterinarian, we're really grateful and glad that you're here doing this instead, so that's fantastic. Well, having, having three kids, and one of them, the youngest one, wanted to be a veterinarian also, although he, he's a bartender now. We had a lot of pets, and I kind of learned how to cure them. And, and uh, I still love animals. I'm still very concerned about the environment and the ocean life and earth life. And having the animals survived for our own survival. And so uh, me and my kids are very tuned to the, the environment, and I love animals, and, but now I have to become an animal on the drum sometimes. Right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And by the way, uh, you've been posting, uh, check out Wally's Instagram uh, photo, by the way. Did you ever find a typewriter here in Portland, Maine? <laughs> it's a great uh, hotel that's got uh, typewriters in it so we mentioned your dad and we'll just a few more questions if you're cool with that yes. you mentioned your dad for those who don't know legendary drummer Walfredo Reyes senior correct uh, drummer in Cuba you were telling me some amazing Cuban stories what's what are some of the biggest lessons that you learned from your dad especially with Father's Day and his birthday just happening Wow I learned a lot of lessons not only on drumming but in life lessons. Um, you know, basically, uh, my dad is one of those that installed in me, if you're really gonna go in, you gotta go in all the way, and there's no ending until you die. This is not like you have arrived, you get the diploma, I'm done. You're never done. And 
not only because you, there's always new knowledge, new drummers elevating the 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 um, the envelope on drumming. Um, I um, I'm always trying to learn what I don't know, and trying to keep up with the old me, because yeah. you like I just posted a a video in 1993 on Instagram and I saw things that I forgot about mm. so they're in the back of my head but I'm not using them so I'm going well I'm gonna set up the drum set when I can and practice figure out what the hell was it that I was doing so that's really good you got to keep up with yourself and then keep up with right. the knowledge yes. and all of that is actually beneficial to you because it develops you into a, a better player and of course listening to music keeping up with the the trends and listening to the old stuff too right there's a lot of great stuff and you know to be healthy because you you don't just have to be healthy just to play drums just before you get to the drums you know the traveling right. the uh, time True. lag you know uh, sometimes you arrive at the place that you're gonna play and you haven't slept well you're tired and drugs is not the way. I mean, I'm talking about sometimes I have to take a Tylenol or a, a, you know, a leave or something, but I try not even to do that because that messes up your liver. So you, uh, the better you feel, the better you feel when you sit on your drums. So uh, you don't want to feel sick or tired or funky, you know, like that, you know. So uh, that's a challenge in this business. And, and my dad has proved that he's always done it. He's always done judo, kept up healthy. So he's 86 and he's always sending me video. Hey, have you heard about this guy? I'm trying this, uh, I'm trying to play congas over here. And the, so he's, uh, that keeps him alive. Yeah. And your dad does judo. Yeah, he's a black belt, third degree. He doesn't do it anymore yeah, yeah, at 86. Yeah. But that installed me, like when I used to watch the three channels, that I used to watch when I was a kid, sure. not like all of the channels that we have now. He used to come in and go, hey, while you're not practicing, someone else is. And when you two shall meet, guess who will win? <laughs> of course, that was more like for judo competition. Yeah. Yeah. But I went like, wow, that can be for an audition. Absolutely. So the guy auditioning, if he knows he's practiced five more hours and knows the, the material better than you, right. he might get the gig. You know, so you know um, that's uh, my dad always is uh, install me all those uh, discipline. It's actually I guess it's like a music discipline. You know, um, one day resting, it's okay, but I start getting nervous if I don't touch my sticks. Or or when you're playing drums, you have to keep up with hand drums also, and those are different techniques. I mean, the commitment is big to be a percussionist. A musician is even bigger commitment. You know, a drum set player with three or four beats, that's great. I mean, you can win the lottery with those three beats. But um, if it doesn't happen, if you really want to survive in this music business, the more versatile, the more variety you can offer the client, which is the guys in the band or the artists you're working um, then you have you add more value to yourself sounds like awesome lessons thank you to your dad and Wally we are just I, I feel so blessed to have hung out with you for the afternoon we're backstage with Walfredo Reyes jr. for God's sakes of Chicago well, Wally thank you. thank you so much for being on musicians on the record thank today you, and we'll, we'll do it again sometime sounds awesome Hopefully my singles will be faster. No. Be great. <laughs> faster than mine. So that's all you need to know. So that's great. Hey, thanks to everybody for watching and commenting. We will uh, check that out in a little bit. This guy's got a show to do for now, though. Uh, we'll got to warm up. Yeah, got to warm up. I'm David Ward from Musicians on the Record. Thanks for watching.